special request of the students, I would like to say a few words about Eurythmy. <clears throat> Eurythmy is one of these enigmas that we do in Walder schools, and nobody knows exactly what it is, and it's called visible speech, and now you can ask why would you make speech visible or visible music. Now, the thing is that often we hear music and we express ourselves, Oh, here I am, or whatever you do. Mm. In Eurythmy, you try to see what the composer actually tried to express in the music. And that brings me to the second half of their request to tell you that for us, this piece has been the story of their life in the training, with high points, low points, happy jubilation, sad moments, moments of run-ins, and it's all there. And so without any further ado, you are going to see the first part of the sonata number eight, opus 13, also called the Pathetic by Ludwig von Beethoven. <laughs>
a recent piece. <laughs> <laughs> nope, 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 here they come. They're here. They're here. Oh. to me to address you, vibrant, vibrant group of women. I would like to look back for a moment at the, when you joined. It was September 20. We were full on COVID. Somehow you applied and you had all your lessons online including you with me without having any idea what you were doing however from the screen and my eyesight is not very great and so i would see these post-it stamp little things there that were the students that i was teaching the enthusiasm that spoke out of the screen was just amazing and somehow you made it through those years. If I'm not mistaken, during that time, during the foundation studies, you heard the image that all of us here on earth made a plan when we were still unborn. And for many people, that is a strange term very much with the unbornness, the fact that we are there before we are born. Not only are we there, we make a plan. And you all know my love for the stars. Step out on a dark night and you see all those stars, you can have the feeling that there are all the souls that are on their way to come and that's where you were before you decided to come down to earth and probably many of your teachers were there too and the decision was made to meet and think of all that happened in your biographies to arrange that that, that specific September you would meet in the training online <laughs> as little things <laughs> on a screen <laughs> amazing you would try to organize it, I don't think you would be able to take care of all the details. We are supposed to do not only that, 
we suddenly saw one another as we really are. And from the screen, we often had an impression of how tall or small a person was going to do qualities of each of you that I have learned to recognize. Ali, you're first because of the picture, you're first because of your last name. <laughs> you have this incredible power of empathy, of living into someone or something else and supporting it in its development. That will be so wonderful to have with your children in your new class. Lisa, I have a culinary image for you. I'll give you the recipe. You start with a sumptuous British high tea. <laughs> And then you add some of the finesse of French cuisine. And then you put some down-to-earth, gluten-free. <laughs> and then you add a pinch of California floatiness. <laughs> and there <laughs> you have Lisa, a woman full of surprises. <laughs> I remember when we were out there in Wildcat Canyon, I had to do the openings somewhere outside and I wasn't sure what I was doing. But there were these eyes looking at me and I had no idea who it was because as I say, my eyesight is not so great. So I, I, and I went, ah, that's the person. Because those eyes were not eyes only. They were, they were taking in like ears. And you combine that with a humility that is all inspiring. If I think of what you managed in these years, not only the training, but the family, a far commute, doing a teacher job, and doing some other trainings on the side. Katie Hannigan, a rock of support right from the beginning. trying to do, you would understand it and you would give me the chance to just deliver it without a judgment if I made mistakes. That is quite something. Thank you for your patience. Heather, admirable determination. You started a training at the age that most other people think about retirement. And she helped through overcoming every obstacle one at a time. Kalela, you wholeheartedly outspokenness and your intuitive being tuned in to what things are is very remarkable. And you are a good friend, like your name says. You really are. And Katie, where is she? There. <laughs> I have three alliteration words for you. <laughs> Colorful, inquisitive, questions <laughs> and your fresh quality and your uprightness has always been just like such an inspiration to me so thank you all for having those qualities and I would like to look ahead for a moment and wonder like this unbornness quality where is it going from here so now you not only really were born, but you also went through this training. That was your decision to do this. And now you're going out into the world of Waldorf. What will lead you forward? 
what will be the quality that mirrors you. That is there. And I think that this, if you can keep the connection with this core of your human beingness that <coughs> all of you have, the core of your existence, your entity, and can totally identify with it and even address it. I can tell you that I try every morning to ask for the new inspiration and every evening to say, this is what I made of it. I did the best I could. And if you dare doing that on a regular basis, especially when the schools that tend to ask 150% of everybody, don't get stuck in the evening with the details. The help will come. But the help can only come if you ask for it. It cannot come uninvited. You have the setting of your intentions and staying true to them. Your togetherness. This shows your togetherness. How you make things together. You're going to make things together with other people and with your students. And your willingness to make the best of it under all circumstances. Those are the tools that you have and that will lead you through this moment of the threshold where you are now going from student into the work life. And all that is left for me to say is safe travels. Mm. old. It may be older. It's attributed to a king who was a king of the, uh, in Georgia, the country Georgia that borders the, uh, the Black Sea next to Turkey, also next to Russia. Georgia has a very ancient and old and very deeply established tradition of polyphonic music, many voices coming together. For many years, this is a song I have hoped to bring to a group. And I also know it requires a kind of listening to one another because each part cannot stand by itself. It literally cannot. In many pieces of music, you miss a part, but you can sing the song. I don't think this song can be sung without every voice. Um, and so it was a great, it was a great pleasure to bring it to these seven beautiful, strong women. We are going to sing three. A fragrant poplar growing in paradise. You yourself are the sun brilliantly shining.
What a privilege it is to speak here on this incredible, incredible occasion. And I want to especially thank my dearest cohort for giving me this honor of speaking and sharing a few words with you today. It truly is a humbling uh, experience for me. I would like to begin by expressing some gratitude toward our divine creator, God, energy, whatever you want to refer to it, for creating such an incredibly mysterious world that continues to enchant us and inspire us. I'd like to thank my family, my parents especially. Uh, words really don't do justice to the amount of gratitude I feel for your continual support. Motion. I'd like Earth style by sharing a little story with you that my mother used to share with me when I was a little girl about six years of age. It was the story of Prophet Joseph, peace be upon him. In the Islamic tradition, his name is pronounced with a Y, with a Ya. So I'll use that because that's what I'm used to, Yusuf. And so she had told me how Prophet Yusuf's brothers were jealous of him. They were envious, and they had a lot of spite and wickedness in their heart. And as a result, they plunged him into a well. And I suppose my mother, in her intuition, sensed the horror in my face when she said that he was plunged into a well. For Yusuf was incredibly beautiful, and he was beloved by Jacob, or Yaqub. The beauty of the story, to me, lay not in the events that transpired, although it is a beautiful story, but in the way my mother embellished it to suit the sensitive constitution of her six-year-old child. Do you know what she told me? She said, Ilham, yes, Yusuf was in the well. There was darkness around him, yes. Maybe he was a little claustrophobic, but <laughs> encrusted in the walls of the well, and in the waters of the well, he found jewels and treasures of all kinds. Diamonds and sapphires and rubies and emeralds. So he wasn't alone. There was treasures there. Ah, as a six-year-old child, treasures, that intrigued me. And I suppose I was calmed after that. Years later, I learned the true story of Yusuf. <laughs> and I realized that although he didn't find treasures in the well, he did discover an ineffable force of divine guidance, divine mercy, divine wisdom. And later on, he was rescued by a group of caravans traveling to Egypt, but that's another story, which I assume some of you may know, but highly encourage you to find out because it's an incredible story nonetheless. But that's not the point. The point is that this imagery of this well encrusted with jewels on the, outside, on the inside of it and even deep within the waters of it intrigued me as a child. That image stayed as an imprint within me for all these years and will continue to stay with me for years to come. Keep that imagery as I share my experiences with my dear cohort. As Renata mentioned, we started our journey through the pandemic our only mode to the outward world were our screens. I saw the beautiful faces of my dear cohort for the first time, not knowing after all these years what it would transpire into its beautiful culmination today. Weeks and months and years went by, my cohort revealed to me aspects of their personality and character 
that shone brightly, and I grew fond of their deep wisdom, contagious vivacity, <laughs> and incredibly strong sense of justice and compassion. In many ways, they gave me a voice. And then as I was writing this speech, I thought to myself that children do this all the time. They dig jewels within us. They peer into us, not with an expectation to find a deep, dark abyss, but an, expect an expectation to be enchanted, an expectation to be bewildered by the treasures that exist within us. And every so often, they might even dig deep within our souls, with the wells of our beings, and present to us a jewel that we ourselves have hidden. I suppose that's why we love children so much. They may bring the best in us. And when I met our faculty, for the first time and thereafter, I was blown away by their cheerfulness and enthusiasm <laughs> and wisdom and grace. I can go on and on, and it'll take forever, this speech, I guarantee you. <laughs> but what is so unique is they were like this all the time. <laughs> we were with each other every weekend for the past three years, and my faculty, our faculty, did not give us less than 100%. to be sound-hearted people, to say the least, whose God's light shined upon them and whose light they share upon us. And in doing so, they lighten our burdens a bit. I suppose you could say that my faculty, they're gemologists. They try to extract the jewels within us, <laughs> would you say? <laughs> and they help us peer into the world with a child's gaze of amazement. They help me and I'm sure I can speak to my colleagues, uncover this sacrality to our existence. I know that our faculty knows how incredibly grateful we are to them in helping us uncover our forces that have been hidden for so long. You know, I can't provide any words of encouragement that's indicative of a quintessential graduation speech, but what I can provide to you, my beloved cohort and dearest faculty, is a humble prayer from my heart. May the world continue to bring you sweetness, and may that sweetness continue to grow. May you continue to return to that sweetness again and again and again. And may you peer into another with a child's gaze, and may you always uncover, not darkness, but a beauty and a treasure of unimaginable unfolding. My dearest and sincerest congratulations to my friends. I love you all so much. Thank you.
they're no longer students. It's hard to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. If you would like to move your chairs back a little bit at the end there, just catch the set shape so you're comfortable. If you go back to the normal. I don't think so. I think they were outrageous people. I think they saw what was happening in the world around them and they said, this is not okay. This is not how to teach children. There has been a huge effort, a good effort in many ways, for Waldorf to become more accessible over the last 50 years, let's say, to become more understandable, comprehensible, and more normal. But now, in 2023, as you leave this program, I encourage you to be outrageous. <laughs> Do not hide your strengths. Do not be shy, nervous, and timid. We need people to go out with courage and strength and enthusiasm and all the beautiful things El have said a few moments ago. So please, my parting words to you. Don't make a nuisance of yourself <laughs> in the schools that you're working, but also go out with full force. Bring good things into the world. Look into the eyes of the children in your care and decide yourself what they need. Okay. Each of our graduates, and this is something we have been doing for a number of years. Uh, many of you know that and uh, over the years, many of us have been there, many more than once, and um, we became close friends with a group, with a community of weavers high up above the town of Pisac. They live several thousand feet higher. And uh, they are the ones who have weaved these scarves. Now the this was an idea that Ken had, so normally he talks about the scarves, but maybe I'll say a few different things, because there's a wonderful story there, too. But there's the motif matters, and of course, after all this time you spent with the weaving the last two weeks, you have an even deeper relationship to something like this, to the work that it requires, to the thoughtfulness, to the pattern, uh, to the rhythm, and how it supports the work. But then in addition to know that all of this is done by the work of the hand, by these women, up, um, uh, uh, by the Amaru up there above the town of Pisac. First, that you are a child of the universe and that you are connected as a being here on the earth. But the story I want to share is how when this was first concocted as an idea, and Ken, you can correct me, because I may get something wrong, it was a word of mouth request. During one visit, Ken spoke and said, would it be possible, do you think you could weave a scarf for each graduate? And they decided on the pattern and they said, yes, that, we will do that for you. And then there was no, nothing written on paper, right? There was no email. There was, as we share it with you. For me, that was a moment of wonder because it felt so naturally uh, living in them and then it became even more of a gift to us. Sorry to go on and on. being a first year and seeing the third years graduate and wondering what that felt like. After three years of so much love and effort to stand here and it be over is amazing and really sad. 
and I complained a lot about Friday nights and every weekend and summers and I have to share with the first and the second years now standing here I understand why each year is so different there's so much magic that grows and challenges and now standing here today I'm so happy I went to all those Friday nights because I will really miss it and it really is the faculty that is the glue to this program and thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for holding my hand in times that have been challenging, <coughs> answering my many questions, listening to me complain, but most importantly celebrating me in times of accomplishment and joy. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you to Stinky for any <laughs> love and support. <laughs> and most importantly, thank you to my fiance Ryan. For three years you've generously shared me with everyone. It is not but easy, and I cannot wait to go out to dinner on Friday nights now. <laughs> and you have been so supportive through everything. You've truly listened without <laughs> Thank you to everyone who has helped me. I've needed a lot of help and have developed a lot in the past three years. There are too many people to thank and too many situations to thank. So just a big thank you. Kalaila <laughs> Sims. say thank you to my family for supporting me and driving from Sacramento to the East Bay every weekend for the last two years, right? Um, Nina, always do bedtime. And to you all, my extended family, for supporting me and being here. Um, We were told um, that we couldn't cry, <laughs> <laughs> and I was one of them yesterday that began crying quickly as we were doing our last of the class. So, in the spirit of Waldorf, and everything that we learned, and for my soul work that I went through this past three years, striving for all the excellence that these co colleagues now, I want you to live into the pictures of it, because for me, it came to me at nine at night last night. And I haven't recited it very, very much, but I would really like to share it with you. It just really felt appropriate to the last three years of all the work that my soul has gone through. And I want to thank my daughter who says, Brillig and the slithy topes. <laughs> Did gyre and gimble in the wave? All mimsy were the boric groves and the momras outgrabe. Beware the jabberwock, my son. The, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal blade in hand and stood a while at the tree. Oh, shoot. <laughs> what? I'm looking to Christine. <laughs> Heather, welcome to Parna.
<laughs> the best education that any student could be offered. Yet, as an adult, I was told that you can get just about the next best thing through the teacher training at the Bay Area Center. <clears throat> and my perception has been that my teachers took 12 plus years and compressed them into a three-year teacher training intensive. This has been a gift for me. And not cry. Fulfilled a long desired dream. <clears throat> brief, but I do want to start with a little story again. <laughs> um, when I was a little girl, uh, about eight years old, uh, I would be woken up with a tickle on my nose, um, and it would bother me so much. And when I opened my eyes, I would see my dad's hazel eyes looking straight at me, the sun shining through the window, and he would say, get up, it's time. And he would take me to the living room, and he would practice our voice lessons. And he would do this every weekend. And I thought to myself over the years, gosh, he couldn't be sleeping in. He could have uh, watched TV or go out with his friends. But no, he wanted to wake his children up and teach them music. And over the years, thinking back, he made me feel like I really mattered. And he awakened this unquenchable thirst for knowledge within me. And I hope to impart that to my kids at Wildcat. And I hope to impart that to Syrah and Sidra. Mm -hmm. Thank you. that I go last, so <laughs> One thing that I have learned in Backwit, to all of the adults who have supported me in my teaching journey, my practicum teachers, Mia, who's here today, who took me under her wing, as the way that you have witnessed and encouraged me and seen me these last three years. And to the beings that we are among the tree, to this spot where we can point our bodies north to the place where we each individually are to be. And my next adventure is I will be continuing my life here at Marin Waldorf School as the first grade teacher. Woo! Thank you.
<laughs> I was in high school. <laughs> Would have been good for me. <laughs> oh man, I don't know where that came from. That was funny. Well done. Well done. Wonderful. What a funny best surprise. Oh, oh, you too. You're amazing. You're amazing. Lisa. What a funny what a funny poem. You are amazing. You guys, we sound like elaborate girls. I know you're a spirit. What is this? <laughs> Keep Amazing. cooking, girl. Yeah. Wonderful. Are you proud of your mom? Yes, you should be. Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Did you see Monica? Hi. Oh yes. Uh, I am doing a design and I'm teaching here in the middle school center. And six years. Oh, Sidhu. Oh, Sidhu. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, thank you, Baba. That's my children. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for so much of your strength behind us, you know. I think how well I think about you. You are just so Oh, of course. I'm doing that. Prank you just sent up. I was like, what? Oh, the elder was a few seconds. I do want to do that. I'm sitting here, so. Okay. Oh, you are? Mm hmm. Right away. I mean, you know, in August. Yeah. I did sculptures. Let's go. Let's see. Oh my god, I feel like. Ribbon! Mama, ribbon! 
It's so pretty. I want to win. It's so much easier when you when you made it. Yeah, no, oh, now you get to have me on the weekends. Mama, Mama. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay, you can have the money afterwards. Great. Right. 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 That's why we picked her. She's amazing. Stop it, sister. You'll see teacher Bell. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. The rest of the rest of the rest I just 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 hold it. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, here. Alright, just just you're such a gift. Oh my god. You're such a gift. This is my family. Beautiful. This is my colleague and my good friend, Alan. We teach together. Yeah. Nice to meet you. My daughter, my whole family loves Elham. So just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're excited. We're excited. Another, another, another. Congratulations. Enjoy your summer. Yeah. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your Saturday. I know. And you know what? It's going to be a up there. Oh, we're very cool. We left the stuff there so you can put all three like that. I might lean on you a little bit. Please. Feel free to. 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 Yeah. The flowers will be. Yeah. I know where to find you. Yeah. There's teacher. Second year shadow. You didn't get the fortune of your hands on your head. Yeah, I'll be we're gonna go see the yeah, some food pretty soon. I'm gonna go with you first. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you for. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. All right, come on. I am. Ooh, what is this sculpture? <laughs> so, do you know Jeff? That's Jeff. Yeah. Oh, that's Aren't you proud of your mom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh, 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 Sculptures. And so uh, each one, like she picked a Celtic god, she picked a, um, a Greek god, like you know, gods and goddess. So I picked Radha. Like, like, like just pick someone. And then uh, they asked us to do like an animal. And so uh, one of our colleagues, they put the Okay, here we need to build like his dolphins. But that was my little Poseidon. That's an awesome thing. Elliot did that? Yeah. Oh, my teacher helped me. But I'm like, I don't know who that person looks like, to be honest, because it just comes from imagination, right? Yeah, that's what they were saying, too. They do look great. Yeah.
Like how, how did it go? Like, but no, not the person's face. Well, I did, but it didn't look like the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's you know how to do. If you guys want the sculptures that I move, we should take turns. No, there's no pressure. This one, the white side, just recycle. This one's really nice. I don't know where to put it though, but it's heavy. Take it. No, no. Well, get like a shelf. That's what I was telling you. Can I just get one of the shelves? Put a shelf. I was like, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, it's like a very. Ancient way of um, correct, correct. which one did you do? Even? So I did this one, and I also did um, that one. There's a like it's like a little these these tablets that we oops, that we just move. Um, just really leaning out, yeah, just sliding. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah, I have it all. Yeah. 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 We're all mixed. Hi. Hi. Uh, it's okay, it wasn't first. worse than 2013. <laughs> oh. You kicked us off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was the blue one. Those things were simpler back then. <laughs> they were. <laughs> so she's my sister. These yeah. are my nieces. Yeah. That's my other sister. Hello. So Maro, Sharo, Jawad. Um, and then you know my children. Uh, and this is Ken, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> really nice. <Yeah. laughs> Those kids. Yeah, it's really, really amazing. And I genuinely pray that uh, back it continues. And I am going to be on that article. Whatever I can right. do to spread right. the word because it's been transformative. Wonderful. So good work, you guys. Are doing. Mm -hmm. There's food when you're ready. Oh yes. <laughs> hey, um. Yeah, this is so we did it to Katie Dad. You see, you know, for me, this is lovely here. It's beautiful. It's nice campus. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not I think that's the You want to come check the food? Oh, okay. There's food. What did you do? Uh, I'm not doing math. <laughs> Because if I would have held it all on No, you can't because you're already teaching the other thing. Graduated? I don't know, Katie. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still a little. Yeah. It, doesn't, it hasn't sunk in. It hasn't sunk in. Oh, are we picturing? Is, every, is everyone there? There she is. <laughs> Don't go oh. Uh oh, this one won't open. I think we have to take this one back. No. Oh, look, we've got it. Oh, look, we've got it. Great, I'm here. Yeah, but we have to do no, but Sorry, I'm I'm really 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 she can stand up behind us. Pop up behind us. There we go. This is recording now. 2013! <laughs> 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 I was going to stay with you for a while. I'd be happy to be back